for you! Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and I am a shameless fan of getting free stuff. But what I'm an even bigger fan of is the increasing trend of major companies taking our hobby a lot more seriously. Specifically, the uh, more adult competitive side of our hobby. Nerf is obviously a billion dollar toy line, um, but in recent years, as the blasters have gotten better and better and better, and we've started really pushing the limits of what they're capable of, we've started seeing things like Blaster Tag Association and Foam Pro Tour, where it's more adult, professional, organized, competitive, 5v5, it's become a sport, or they're trying to make it more like a sport, in the same way that Airsoft and Paintball have been very sporterized for many, many years. Uh, and that, that's a whole different area, and you really can't use dock nerf blasters and something like that. And not, well you can, but it would be very difficult to be very competitive. And so we're pretty much all using, you know, heavily, heavily modified stuff. FDLs, Caliburns, Talon Claws, those sorts of things. Uh, but those are not available in, say, Walmart. Um, but there has been an increasing push by some companies to actually, to make that available. So obviously we have, start first we had the Dart Zone Pro, then we had the Nexus, then we have the, uh, the Ion, all coming from Dart Zone. But there have been companies that have been taking that side of the, the Nerf hobby seriously for a long time. We've had Worker has obviously been producing, you know, high-end stuff for a long time. Then Captain Slug came along with the, with the, with the, um, the Caliburn, uh, Out of Darts, FDL, all of these, you know, smaller companies, you know, home, you know, small independent companies. Uh, but until Dart Zone really jumped in with the, uh, the, net, the, the Dart Zone Pro series, we weren't seeing it on that big of a level. But there were also some other companies. Jet had produced the CETA, which had a lot of potential, but ended up being uh, less than what we were really hoping for. Uh, Evike then took that and cre uh, produced the CETA S, which was considerably better quality in a number of ways. And that was, that was cool. And now... Velocity Outdoors has created a subsidiary called Game Face Prime, and they've gotten into the Nerf sport hobby uh, with their own take on the CETA S, or on the CETA. This is still designed by Jet, their name is still on here, but this one is uh, taking it to yet another level by making it even more modular. And you know I'm gonna love that. So the barrel does now in fact come off. It looks like it uses a standard Nerf barrel lug as well. I haven't actually tested that yet. Uh, it has a vertical foregrip unlike the Cita S did. It does have a, a metal a barrel with a scar barrel attached, but other than that it appears to be a Cita lower receiver and most of that still seems very similar. They do... Uh, and, and by similar I mean it's it's the same box. It's just different Different coloring. Oh, that is some nasty glare I am getting off of my lights. Can I do anything about it? No. Deal. Um, it is uh, climbing slightly lower velocities. This one said uh, the CDS s was 150. These are coming in at 130. I'm uh, interested to see, uh, I'll obviously be putting, comparing these two and putting it through the chronograph and all of that. Um, but they take the same magazines, though these magazines do seem to be a different plastic. It's a slightly different orange and seems to be Slightly better quality. I am curious. So let's get this one open and take a look at it, and then I will take them both to the range in the chronograph and get you all some numbers and and my thoughts. So what do we have here? Look, instructions, <laughs> warnings, and warranty. Not a toy. Do not shoot in face or eyes. Wear eye protection to prevent serious injury to eye. May be dangerous up to a hundred yards. A hundred yards. My foot. Uh, read owner's manual before using. Do not brandish or display this product in public. May confuse people. And may be a crime. Police and others may think it's a firearm. Do not change the coloration and markings to make it look more like a firearm. That is dangerous and may be a crime. That's nice of them to actually warn us about all of that. Uh, warranty. 90 day warranty. What is covered? Parts and repair. What is not covered? Transportation charges to... Authorized service station for defective. Oh, you have to pay shipping. Train. Warranty claim. Interesting. 
We have the roll, pump handle, trigger, mag release, magazine, trigger lock, Picatinny rail. Assemble the the gun. They do call it a gun. All right. Well, once again, they're they're not putting this down as as toys. These wouldn't be in the toy aisle. These would be in the sporting goods aisle with the uh, paintball guns and the airsoft guns. So it is, I suppose, appropriate to call it a gun. I'm sure many people will disagree, and it'll cause a great flame war on the internet. But to each their own. All right. So what needs to be assembled, the barrel has to be put in, and the pump group has to be put on. Uh, I'm going to toy with disassembling it first. Let's take a look. It does seem to have the uh, Cita S's plastic quality, which was a, a definite step up. Yeah, definite step up from the Cita's. Yep, pretty much the lower receiver looks exactly the same, other than... Different markings, that one had the e-vike markings, this one has game face markings. Same safety, same everything. But the barrel is decidedly different. This one is two parts. There's that train. So I'm curious what how this actually comes off and whether it is actually a standard Nerf barrel lug. Let's find out. Okay, so the front of the barrel comes off so that you can then get the priming handle all of the way out because it is, does have this shroud. And then it does just come off. Is that a standard Nerf barrel? You'd think I'd be prepared and have a barrel standing by, but no! No, sir! No! No! That would be too easy! Too easy! Too clear cut! Never work. How do I not have any barrels lying around? You'll do. Or not. Come on! Give me the thing! Sure. Why not? I found a 3D printed barrel. It will have to do. Will it fit? Oh, it fits, but it doesn't want to rotate into place. Fine, I'll find a Nerf one thing. Why not? Bit and pull them out in my container. I have found a barrel that I is definitely not going to work because it's not going to fit because of that. So, yeah, it does. Uh, well, you know what? Let's go that way. We'll go the other way around. Do I have a blaster with a barrel lug? I swear. I, I No, really. I do the modular stuff. Aha! Tactical jolt. Yes. That answers that. Yes, it is a standard Nerf barrel attachment lug. That is fascinating. Hopefully Hasbro don't find out. All right. So other than that, it's got the same pins, uh, same stock. Uh, can be gotten off. Standard buffer tube, so if you want to put your own stock on there, you can. It does lock nicely. It's not as wobbly. It does, in fact, lock into place. Doesn't collapse. That's nice. Okay. And that, yep, pull the pins. That actually might be... Yep. All that seems exactly the same. Let's put it back together. That goes on there. This goes in here. Does hypothetically mean they could... Oh, can you manage a thumb screw, sir? Uh, in the future, if they wanted to, they could have different barrel shrouds to create different looks. That would be fairly nifty. And they could do completely different upper receiver looks if they really felt like it. Alright, now this goes on here somehow. 
All right. All right, now we will assemble it as recommended. We have a, feels like an aluminum barrel that is threaded and has a threaded scar barrel on the end of that, similar to the one on the C to S, a three, an actual rifled barrel. This again, the fact that this screws in would suggest that they could very easily have different barrel lengths in the future. They could have longer barrels, shorter barrels, um, that level of modularity, of course, tickles me pink. The front is a bit wobbly. I'm not a huge fan of the wobble, but I guess uh, maybe uh, something that attached on the top of the Picatinny rail to hold it in place better might, uh, might solve that. Oh, look at that. They made it use regular screws instead of uh, hex. That's nice. Okay. They went with a vertical foregrip because that's what they typically use. I did recommend angled foregrips as I am a fan of them. Uh, obviously this being Picatinny rail, you could put whatever foregrip you felt like on it. The nice thing about them using Picatinny rail is it is it is standard across numerous industries at this point. Airsoft, paintball, and a lot of the Nerf hobby. All right. Oh yeah. Despite the fact that I like uh, angled foregrips better, that is a nice, nice prime. It does feel like a slightly weaker spring though. So we will compare that. Nice blue mag adapter. I don't think I had any in that color yet. Well, yep, that's exactly the same. It said same magazine, different color, and it does... It feels like a slightly better plastic. It's not quite... Maybe, maybe it's the same and it's just a different color and I'm just seeing things, but... This is the Evike one. It's got the Evike logo. This is the... This one doesn't have... They didn't put their logo on the mag. Interesting. Okay. Does appear to have the same dome-headed darts, though. We'll see how well those work out for us. All right, so let's do a comparison with the Evike one. Well, Evike sent me more bells and whistles, obviously. They sent me the nifty sight. They sent me a uh, replacement stock. Uh, someone else, I don't remember whether they just sent it to me or whether I... I paid for it. I don't remember. But somebody sent me a, a pump grip with Picatinny rail because the C to S did not have Picatinny rail on its uh, foregrip, which was a bummer. I haven't put a, any kind of a, a foregrip on it yet, though I could. I've got lots of them. Anyway, um, well, let's compare. Other than, I mean, they're obviously both CETAs, and that's going to make them very, very similar. Lower receivers are identical as far as I can tell. Um, this one does have a longer barrel, so that might be why it's getting slightly less power if it doesn't have enough, if they've got the same spring, the longer barrel might actually reduce the power slightly. Um, the upper receiver does seem a little bit different. The, in this one, the Picatinny rail is kind of recessed down onto it, uh, on, or this one rather, it's recessed down, and this one it's a little bit higher, and that's slightly interesting. I doubt it'll have any effect on performance, but uh, just another difference. And then again, obviously this one, the barrel does come off, and this one it doesn't, which means this one doesn't have that... Actually, it kind of does still have the barrel level. All right, enough blathering. Let's get numbers for you all. I believe I have... I do! The original ammo from both. All right, this time with the camera recording. We have the C to S firing the ammo that it came with. We'll see what kind of numbers we get. They claim 150, 100, 167, 167, 171, 173. And I stuck it in the back of the dirt catcher. So other than that first one being a weird outlier, the other ones seem to have gone well. Weird. Alright, 
Let's try the uh, Game Face Pro. All right, Game Face Pro firing their ammo. They're claiming 130. Let's see what we actually get. 155. 146. 158. 142. 134. So, higher. And we didn't have one ridiculous outlier. Weird. All right. It's well known that these darts are not the best, so let's try some different darts. I'm going to try the, uh, the Dart Zone Pro. Darts. Or the Dart Zone darts. The black and orange ones that you can get at Walmart. We're going to try them. Here we go. Back to the CDS now with Dart Zone darts. Let's see what we get. 189. 185, and I knocked the dart loose. 177. 174. 179. So a little higher, and definitely more consistent, so... Dark Zone darts. Lovely. Let's see what the game face has to say about it. See if we see a similar improvement. 152. 153, and I stuck that one. <laughs> 158, and I knocked it loose again. 141. 154. So not as much of his improvement, still consistent. Interesting that that other one got that much more improvement. I mean, it wasn't huge, but still. All right, let's take him to the range and see if I can get some pings out of him. The golf cart was actually out of commission for a while there as it had a flat tire. And uh, so I could not putter around. Luckily, I replaced all of the tires and it seems to be working beautifully. Again, it puttereth mightily. And we're off to the range. Oh yeah, I trimmed and I have not cleaned up the mess. Poor shame. Work of dodge! We have arrived. Train! The nerve. Somebody asked me recently what kind of trains they are. They are, in fact, BNSF. Or at least that one is. That one was a BNSF. And there it goes. All right, let's do this. They're here on my range. I have the usual plethora of pinging targets. Plus, I've got the Evike pop can targets set up. They're much smaller. We will see if I can hit any of them. We will start with the C to S with their stock ammo. We'll start just by trying to hit a 25. Actually, look, I've got a sighty thing, and I'm gonna use it because they sent it to me. There we go. Aha! Nearly came back and hit me. Let's go for the 50. Can I hit the 50? Ah, a little bit low. Oh, a little bit high. A little bit low. It's in the middle somewhere. Meow. Ha! I got the 50. All right, let's aim for the left hand pop can targets. I got it on the bounce? I hit the tree and it came back and hit it. That's amazing. I'll take it. Oh, a little low. Oh, no good. Oh, no good at all. I'm too high. All over the place with this thing. Still got ammo. Now. Round's complete. We will be back with darts on darts after the game one has its thing. Right. Next. All right. We have the game face prime with their darts and their longer barrel and they're not having a sight. We'll see if we can hit anything at all. Well, there's the 25. All right, let's aim for the 50. Oh, no good. 50. Oh, got it. All right. Well, we've still got two more on this side. We'll start with them. No. Nope. What? How dare you? I swear that never happens. Nope. <laughs> I hit the 25 on the bounce. Nope. 
Well, I hit the target behind it. Oh, just over the top. Close, no good. Throw the little triangle. Round's complete! All right, Let's see if Dart Zone Darts do any better. All right, C to S, Dart Zone Darts, eight shots. Let's see what we can do. Can we hit the 25? Yes. Can we hit the 50? Oh, not quite. No. There it is. All right, aiming for the pop cans. Oh, close. Still close. I got him. I got another dart. Oh, I clipped him, but he didn't fall. All right. Darts on darts do seem to be more accurate. Let's try it in the other one with the longer barrel. All right. Game face prime with darts on darts. Let's see what we can do. Well, that's a hit. Oh, two for two. Oh, close. Oh, I hit the 25 on this side on the bounce. Oh, just barely to the right. Just high. No! One shot left. I got him! Yes! <laughs> Victory is mine. I got the delicious, delicious pings. All right. Back to the table. Talk about this stuff. Drain. It's out there. All right. Make a noise. All right. So, final thoughts. Uh, it's fun. I, I actually enjoy both of these a great deal, um, just because of what they represent, the, the modularity that they both have. This one is more modular, and I like that even more. I like that they could have different um, barrel shrouds, that they have the barrel is threaded, they could have different length barrels, different barrel materials. Uh, I like that they moved to Picatinny rail for the foregrip, so that you could put whatever um, grip you wanted down here. Those are all excellent additions. Uh, over the C to S, which was an improvement over the C to. So it's nice to see this platform evolving because I always felt it had a lot of potential. It just hadn't been, hadn't lived up to its potential yet. And it, it still could use some work. Um, they're wanting to get into the, the competitive nerf area, the sporterized stuff, the 5v5 stuff. Um, their, their springers are gonna need to be a little bit more accurate and they're definitely gonna need to get a, little, a lot closer to 200 FPS. Uh, that is obvious. I'm sure that's a comment that I would be getting. Uh, they are hitting a little bit low, but that's just a matter of putting in a heavier spring and, and some of the internal stuff. Um, I did recommend that they have multiple spring options on their site, that you could order it with either multiple springs or have different springs that you could get. Springs are, are cheap. It would be, and it would, it would really boost their, um, the potential because, you know, if they had something that, that would get it down to 120 and had ones that would get it closer to, you know, 190, 200, uh, and stuff in the 150, those are the three ranges that really need to get met because that's your HVZ, your general public Nerf War, and your competitive stuff all rolled together. And if they wanted to then get into high cap stuff, you know, 200 plus, um, they could. I don't know uh, if this platform is really capable of that, but it definitely has a great deal of potential, and I do appreciate that. I also very much appreciate the warning, the fact that they acknowledge that uh, these do look very realistic, relatively speaking, and if you were to paint it all black, that, that could be a serious problem. Uh, but I'm not surprised that they did that because they're coming at this from the airsoft world, where all of the, the guns look extremely realistic, and so that is a concern that their company already has to deal with, and they just ported it over, and I appreciate that they did that. I appreciate that they made them bright colors. They made them even brighter colors than the C to S. The C to S does still have a lot of black on it, where this has gray and more, more of the blue. Um, I do like that. I would like to also see uh, orange and green. Uh, everyone always does red and blue. Nerf in its early dart tag did both orange and green and red and blue, and that way you could have four teams and I want more orange. So uh, I would recommend putting in more color options uh, at orange and green uh, or, you know, something, some additional colors. So I like that. I recommended all sorts of additional doodads, you know, angled foregrips and, and sights, which they obviously already do have all of that for the airsoft world. So. Um, masks, I, I would recommend selling them with eye protection of some kind. It wouldn't be that hard to put in a, a cheap pair of eye pro. Um, obviously they do sell eye pro because Airsoft, um, there, there's a lot of advantages that they have from coming from that world, which is already the high, 
high, you know, more dangerous and competitive world, and simply porting that into the Nerf world, which has been more and more getting into that. Um, and so I, I hope I, I hope they they take it and they do well with it because they have the potential because of of what they already have with manufacturing and all of that. Um, they asked for recommendations. I recommended. Um, getting some good, powerful flywheel blasters that can use half darts or, for, or full darts. Maybe just really focus on the half darts, honestly, which I think was, was their plan. Um, that way you could have... Uh, I also recommended that, well, if, if you then do that and you have, you know, a, a long barrel on that, Master Keys, because they're great for HVZ, they're just fun in general. And again, because they're coming from the airsoft world, they have options that might not exist elsewhere for air pressured things like what I have on tier and ire, um, having air powered things that you could atta have barrel attachments for for rockets or for shotgun rounds or for, or for whatever, um, they could do that. I also very much uh, recommended they get some kind of a select fire uh, SMG or select fire pistols uh, just because uh, that is incredibly useful in, in, in all sorts of settings, especially in you know, blaster tag association or, or foam. Pro, foam Pro Tour, having a sidearm that you can quickly draw and pop off a couple of shots when someone jumps out of cover and you don't have time to, uh, to, to aim as much as you'd like, being able to pop off you know, two or three darts uh, as opposed to dumping half of a magazine with a single trigger pull from a high, uh, a high power blaster. Uh, I would love to see either auto pistols or you know, SMGs with stock attachment points or, or those sorts of things. Um, those are the kind of things that I recommended. Uh, what recommendations do you have? They are going to watch this video. Hopefully they will read the comments. So the sort of comments that you guys put in there um, is the sort of stuff that they're gonna look at. Um, I, I, some of my recommendations were you know, geared towards HVZ. So you know, I'm talking slightly lower FPS or having the option for a lower FPS. Again, with springers that's simple. It's just you know, sell the different springs. With flywheelers that could be a little bit more tricky. Uh, especially if you know if you make it so that it can switch between a lower or a higher FPS, then you need to make sure that that gets that can be locked or or something so that people don't switch it when they're at HVZ. But you know people can do that anyway and have and if they get caught they get in trouble. But um, I mean for the the competitive stuff they tend to cap a, um, flywheels at 150, uh, which is also what you know your general Nerf war is. So it would work for both of those. But if you then wanted to use them for HVZ, you'd have to have a way to bring it down. You know, another 30 FPS, and there there are ways that they could do that. If they made it so that at 3s it was, you know, 150, and at on a 2s it got it down to 120, um, that would work, uh, and that would be something that they could do, and they they could they could look into. But um, that's one of the beautiful things about Nerf is what a varied hobby it is. HVZ is very different from your public Nerf war with you know in a park, which is very very different from the sporterized 5v5 stuff that we're trying to get. Uh, made more mainstream. Um, and the, the other huge advantage of Nerf is that it can be played in more places because it is seen as safe and because we can clean up uh, our mess. We're not going to be leaving, you know, paintball bits or airsoft pellets all over the place. Uh, we can play it in parks, we can play it on campuses. Um, and that, that means that this hobby does have a lot of potential um, to be able to be very public and very mobile and very popular. And so companies like this taking an interest in that and helping that grow uh, will hopefully have a good effect on it. Um, so hopefully um, they take our feedback and, and use it and do in fact uh, you know, build stuff that really does reflect what we're looking for because Lord knows Hasbro isn't doing that. Uh, but that, that isn't what Hasbro is about and it never has been and you know, we kind of have to uh, understand that. But that does mean that there is that massive niche for these companies to, to get in on, and I, I, I'm glad that they are. And I'm glad that they're reaching out to people in the community and, and asking and, and figuring it out and doing it right, or at least trying to, and we'll see how that works out. So give your feedback down in the comments, and we'll see where this goes. Thank you for sending this. This is really neat. I like the changes that you made, the upgrades that you made from this one. Uh, I really like all of them. Just that barrel wobble, if you can figure that out, it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, and uh, very cool. So thank you for sending it, and thank you guys for watching.